Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the pressure in fluids and how it varies whenever the fluid isn't moving. So first off, let's draw what we're looking at. We're interested in some fluid, and we're going to be analyzing what we call a differential fluid element, which is just a small piece of the fluid below. I'm going to say that this is some delta m, which just means some differential mass. Now we're interested in statics, so we're going to be using the sum of the forces is equal to zero. We're saying that this thing is not accelerating, and we're just going to do a force balance based on all the pressures surrounding it. So first off, let's start with what we're familiar with. There's going to be a force of gravity that is pulling this thing down. And the magnitude of that is just going to be equal to delta m multiplied by gravity. The only other thing going on is pressure that pushes this element from all directions. For our analysis, we're going to let our pressure change just a little bit. We're going to say that the pressure on the left side and the bottom are both p, but we are going to let it be a little bit changed based on some unknown gradient. And we need to multiply this gradient by some distance. So I'm going to give this distance a name. I'm going to call this distance in the x direction delta x. And in the y direction, this is going to be delta y. So this ends up being a dp dx multiplied by delta x. And likewise, our pressure in the y direction is going to increase by some dp dy, and since we already have a name, this is going to be multiplied by a delta y. I'm defining x to be moving to the right and y to be moving upward. All the forces that we're going to experience are going to be based on either gravity or pressure. Let's start off with the sum of the forces in the x direction. We're going to have two forces, one caused by the pressure on each of these faces. Now, just for clarity's sake, I'm going to go and name the different faces that we're going to be dealing with. So on the bottom, this is going to be face 1, face 2, face 3, and face 4 on the right. We're going to have some force of pressure on face 2 that is going to be pushing our little mass to the right, and we're going to have some force of pressure on face 4 pushing it to the left. So our sum of the forces is just the force of pressure on 2 minus the force of pressure on 4. And this is going to be equal to 0. Again, there's no acceleration. The fluid is going to be still. How do we get from pressure to a force? Well, pressure is just going to be equal to the total force divided by the area, which means that the force is going to be equal to pressure multiplied by our area. So the force on phase 2 is just going to be equal to the pressure on phase 2, which was just P, multiplied by the area of phase 2. And then the pressure on phase 4 was this P plus dp dx delta x. And that altogether is going to be multiplied by the area of phase 4. And again, that's all equal to 0. OK, so now we need to define what exactly these areas are. Well, this thing that we're looking at is a box. It has a width delta x, a height delta y, and then a depth delta z that we're not really seeing. So the area of this face 2 is going to be the same as the area of face 4. And that's going to be equal to delta y multiplied by delta z into the page. And for face 1 and 3, this is simply delta x times delta z. All right, a2 and a4 are the same, so we can divide through the entire equation by them. And once we do that, we can subtract out the p's. So we end up with a negative dp dx times delta x is equal to 0. Or we can just say that dp dx is equal to 0. This is the key result from our x analysis. The pressure is not going to change, just moving left and right. So now let's look at the y direction. We still have the forces due to the pressure on the faces. 1 is pushing up, and 3 is going to be pushing down. But then we also have this additional fg. So this is going to be pointing downward, 
And the value of that we said was delta m multiplied by g. Now, just because we have gravity doesn't mean that this is moving. We're still in statics, so the sum of the forces is equal to zero. All right, so let's split up our pressures just as we did before. So the pressure multiplied by A1 minus the pressure plus dp dy times delta y multiplied by A3 minus our gravity component. All right, so we have A1 and A3 defined. Well, let's spend a moment to define this delta m. Mass is simply equal to density multiplied by volume, which is going to be equal to density multiplied by the three lengths multiplied together to get the volume of the box. Delta x, delta y, delta z. Now before we move on, let's just note that p multiplied by a1 minus p multiplied by a3 is going to be equal to zero. Those two values are going to cancel out. So we can get rid of both of those. And so we'll end up with a negative dp dy multiplied by delta y multiplied by this a3, which was the delta x delta z. And then we have to subtract off our delta m, which was this rho value multiplied by delta x delta y delta z. All of that multiplied by gravity. All of these deltas are going to cancel out. And what we end up with is that negative dp dy minus rho g is equal to zero. Or we can say that dp dy is equal to a negative rho g. Now it turns out that this rho g turns up over and over again. It's so common that it's given its own name, which we call gamma. So this gamma is known as the specific weight of our fluid. So density is simply how much mass does a fluid element have per unit volume. Gamma is simply the amount of weight that it has per unit volume. So the pressure does actually vary in the y direction even if no motion is happening. So we can come up with an equation to determine what p is going to be through integration. It's just going to be negative gamma times y plus a constant. So this is our key result from our video. And what this means is that if we know the pressure at any point, let's say that we know the pressure at the surface here is one atmosphere, since we're assuming that we're on Earth. Well, if we know the specific weight of water, we can just track how we're moving downward, and we can see how the pressure will increase.